Hi guys, welcome back. So today I wanted to do something a little bit different. I've got some pieces that are going to create a um, pop-up slider card. Um, I love how this looks, so I thought I'd give it a whirl. This was actually an SVG file that I found online. So um, yeah, some of these files, some of the um, blogs and that out there will give you free uh, SVG files. So um, yeah, I can't remember where I got it from though. <laughs> um, but you have this piece here, which is the slider part that will go in between these two panels. So you have one solid and then you have one that is um, cut down the sides and along the bottom here to create like a hinge and then you have one score line there one score line at the bottom here for this little piece and then one at the top so this will create one hinge you'll then fold over and then this bottom one this little one gets folded back up on itself so it will stand up kind of like an easel card when we're done obviously you won't see my hand through that <laughs> all of this will fit at the back so if you wanted to make this yourself I'll give you some rough me measurements um, just so you have an idea so I have tried to make this about five and a half by four and a quarter so the measurement it for this one is like five uh, sorry four one, two, four and three eighths <laughs> but you could make it to four and a quarter if that helps by five and a half and then this center panel coming in this will be easier if I just put this down hold on <laughs> I have stuff everywhere so <laughs> let's do this right so then you're to come in for your first um, cut line on each side this is It's about half, just over half of an inch. So it's, it's two, three, four, five eighths of an inch ish. If you're working in a in a like a because this is just over four and a quarter wide, it might be the maths might be easier. So um, and then of course the same. On that side so however wide actually this is probably easier however wide you want this middle panel to be just make sure you come in the same distance from the sides for this cut line I hope that makes sense and then from the bottom if I was doing this I would just then do the same distance from here I would do the same distance up to cut this line at the bottom that makes some sense I hope <laughs> So if I just recap what I was trying to say. So decide how wide you want your middle panel to be and then come in the same distance from the sides. So say it's half an inch and half an inch and then do half an inch from the bottom as well and you should be good. Then for this piece that you've now essentially cut on three sides, don't cut it on four sides because you'll just cut a hole, <laughs> you want a small, however, whatever length this is, you need one smaller strip at the bottom here and this is about half an inch so I would stick with maybe half an inch there and then just divide up this whole section just divide it in half so that's pretty easy and that's where you're going to score and then you're going to score here and then on your actual hinge is where you're going to score as well this little thing here is just so that you've got some way to pull the um, slider mechanism out. Then this panel is exactly the same size as this one. So when you're starting out, you'll cut two of the same size. You can use a round die or if you've got round um, like circle punches, you might be able to do this sort of thing um, or cut it by hand just so that you've got some way to actually pull the slider bit out. And then this slider bit this needs to be, if I just flip this over, 
this needs to be it'll go that way needs to be slightly wider than your cut lines so can you see if I turn it this way you can see it a bit better there slightly wider than where your cut lines are you don't want it the whole distance because you will need to put some tape along the edges to stick it all together which I'll show you um, and then lengthwise you want it to line up at this edge here where you where you're going to pull the um, slider out but you want it to be pretty much level in fact you want it the same length as this piece here so if I try and turn this over so this the length from the top edge to the bottom is that it's going to end where this flap ends because this is what will attach to this piece here hopefully that made some sense <laughs> it's also the first time I'm doing this so <laughs> bear with me anyway so when it comes to tape for the centre bit you just want it on this small edge this little little piece here and you want it to be underneath so when you're looking at the front you want it underneath this flap. So let's see if I can get this together <laughs> without it going too wrong. So I'm just taking that tape off. I've got a fairly strong tape here because I think if you're going to be pulling this in and out you want it strong. So you want these to be the same side up, so right side up. And this is going to go inside here but I'm going to turn this over so that I can get this right. So I'm turning that over and I want to basically line up this edge with the edge of this little flap here. But hopefully it will line up with this top edge as well. I'm just going to turn this around because I'm right handed and see if I can do this. <laughs> so you've got them both facing down and let's hope that this lines up and also because this has already cut a hole in it I need to kind of get that in the middle <laughs> ish um, so yeah <laughs> let's see how this goes um, actually I'm going to line up this little hole first so that that's centre there and lined up here and then I'm going to hold that And stick it down that's actually easier if the if you hadn't punched a hole yet it wouldn't matter because the, this part you're not actually going to see it but you still need enough gap around here so that you can put some nice strong adhesive so I am just going to burnish this so now you have the start of your mechanism cool huh it's easier than I'm explaining but like I say it's first time I've done it so and it's me yeah right so some more strong tape and I'm just gonna put this is quarter inch tape this is lawn fawn tape but I'm just gonna put this along the edges on three sides so all the way around the edge here I think that will do it but just to be sure I'm going to put another little like a thinner piece of tape in the gap um, Just for some extra secure secureness. Oh, I can do a fat one there. Right. Let's get all of this off. So 
Now what you want to do is take your back panel, put it face down so that this is what would be the back of your card, in case you've got two different colours. And you're simply, I say simply, <laughs> you're going to line it up. fingers and thumbs today. I'm just simply going to line it up with the edges. Like so. Again, I'm just going to burnish this round here. thought I'd stuck it together <laughs> but I haven't so it will the more you play with it it will get easier and to be fair it could be this piece of paper that is actually I'm going to take this off no I'm not But it will get easier the more you play with it. So that's cool, isn't it? Anyway, so I'm gonna get a bit of ribbon on here before I stick the main main guy on, just so it makes it easier for someone to pull that out. from the back loop it round no, I've gone the wrong way I always go the wrong way with this pull too hard on the ribbon because it is just cardstock so <laughs> you don't want to risk ripping it just finagle until you're happy ish and then just trim this down where you want it go there's a nice little thingy so that will then pull your mechanism up and down and this is flat completely flat so the next thing we want to do is open this you don't have to go all the way up there like that <laughs> just get this out of the way that's just so that I can get that out of the way and I want to stamp a sentiment because this is the inside is where you will stamp your sentiment and then this portion here is where you could write your message to someone or you could write it on the back. I might stick this to a card base but you could use this as your card um, and that would look really nice as well. So I've got Bermuda Bay, just a colour that I thought would work well with, with this. Sounded a little bit like whoa. Anyway, so who? I can't help it. Right, so that's right, and that is from. Get in. Uh, where is it? I haven't told you anything. My pink stamp, <laughs> Punny Licious, for the who loves you. And then a little foxy stamping up paper for some of the pattern paper. It just coordinated with my owl, which you haven't even seen yet. So <laughs> this is my little owl. I just found some cardstock that I had that kind of worked with the green and 
I thought it looked nice. Uh, this is just some textured cardstock. And this is, I can't remember what size he was, but I kind of worked out from this on Cricut Design Space how big I needed him. Um, and he's from the Sentimentals cartridge. So, right, so now we're going to stick him on now. Got a cat hair or something. So you want to stick him only in this section here, right? Because so basically this bit that's standing up, that's the only bit that he needs glue on him. This bit is stuck to the the bottom, so unless you want to bend him, you don't really want him there. So you want him kind of set like so. Um, and obviously you don't want it like that. <laughs> so. So I am going to pop this down and I kind of have an idea of where I was going to stick him anyway but I just want to find out uh, roughly how far up I need to put adhesive so it's about there so and I might just use some wet adhesive for this go a bit higher and then I'm just lining them up in the middle or wherever you want the image to be um, in the middle of the thingy and then he will just stand up like that Make sure he's good and stuck. And now he'll stand up like so. Who loves you? <laughs> right, so obviously this is quite plain, I think, <laughs> compared to what I normally do. So I've got a white gel pen and a ruler. So I thought I would just add some detail around the outside. You could leave it like this, that'd be fine. But I like a bit of detail. So I think I'm just going to, where's the, I've got a notch that's missing in this thing. Oh, that side. <laughs> so uh, let's do it this way so you guys can see. I'm using, this is a Tim Holtz ruler and I'm just using the grid which is kind of what it was meant for to give me an idea of where I want to um, add some lines. Like so. little lines nothing too strenuous <laughs> I couldn't do that even if I wanted to I don't have the energy. It just makes a difference. This is obviously a little trickier up here, but I probably should have done this before I put the ribbon on. Oh, 
clean that off because it's got white stuff on it now. Anyway, there you go, guys. A very simple, hopefully my instruction was somewhat <laughs> okay, considering it's the first time I've done it as well. If not, please leave me a comment, a nice one, <laughs> um, to say that you want another tutorial on it, and I'll do another one and hopefully explain it a bit better. But I hope it helps, and it's just another fun kind of card to give to someone. Again, it's flat, so it's easy for postage, and... Um, yeah, isn't that a sweet surprise for someone to get? So who loves you? I also thought it'd be a fun um, non-traditional Valentine's card. So I hope you've enjoyed this guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.